Hello, Hello we're, we're Moss Charlie. Charlie. And on this episode, we're going to talk about is it too late to start your comic? Or for that matter, start anything. <clears throat> we're going to have major topics or bullet points. And in those topics, we're going to have little subgenres or subtopics. Yay. <laughs> so while we're talking, we'll be showing some of my warm up sketches. So you have something to watch while we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, let's begin. Let's yeah, start right. with fear. Yeah, that's our first major topic, obviously, because that is huge. <laughs> um, so, under fear, we have um, not being accepted by others. That's a humongous issue for a lot of people. Um, you have to realize that you're actually going to be doing something that you may not be accepted by many people. Yeah, not everybody is going to like your work or your art or your story. There's always going to be somebody who, you know, is going to complain about it. Yeah. Or, you know, it's kind of like that phrase that um, not everybody likes peaches, you know, or, yeah. you know, yeah. out of a whole fruit basket, there's, you know, somebody... Well, there's going to be some fruit nobody likes. Yeah, and that's not yeah. nobody. It's just some, some somebody, people right. yeah. don't like it. Yeah. So it's not like your work is not going to be liked it's just sometimes it's just a few people mm -hmm. but you'll grow you will grow if you're consistent you will grow an audience maybe a small amount of people yeah who will like your work yeah and being accepted by others shouldn't really be the motivating force yeah of, of doing something that you have a passion for that you have an idea a vision for you know it's really more about you wanting to do something that you like and you have a feeling that there's worth enough to put out there and other people are not going to tell you that it may be worth putting out or even being addressed or that oh no it's just a hobby or just whatever someone will discount your work or discount your feelings whatever they're going to give it a label it'll be negative in some way is what I'm saying but I think that it shouldn't really be placed on someone else's shoulders or your vision should not be completely shattered if it doesn't fit what someone else thinks it should be yeah it's what you think it should be and that is really what you should think about accepting because you're accepting yourself and that's the most important part of this Yes. Still super scary. Yeah, the, all these things, mm -hmm. all of these fears that we're going to mention are, are real and honest, and everybody actually has these. It's, We've dealt with this. Yeah. We deal with it daily. All the time. You're never going to escape these parts of, you know, expressing yourself in the modern day, you know, art world or any world for that matter. You know, you're exposing yourself, and fears are going to be something you're going to be having to deal with daily. Yeah, we're going into Hourly. this. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, right? Everybody's going into this, and we're going into this knowing that all these fears are real. Yeah. Knowing, like the first one, not being accepted by others, knowing that there will be people who won't accept it. Yeah. That's okay. It is. The next thing that we want to talk about that is a fear that may be for some people may not be but it is really a fear and we've dealt with it and it's doing the wrong thing yeah Ugh. there's no such thing as doing the wrong thing doing the wrong thing is not doing it yes that is the wrong thing you have to believe in yourself just enough you know it's that whole you know yeah it's, it's that fear of always just like it's a fear that you're always gonna you might make this huge Atroc atrocious mistake yeah. that you're never going to recover from or mm -hmm. well that's literally the next subtopic yeah. making a fa fatal <laughs> yeah. mistake you're right. it's completely connected yeah that's you know it's connected and yeah. it's like y you can you will solve your problems you will figure things out yeah you will make mistakes yeah that's but mistakes shouldn't be held as something that's negatively yeah it's not a black mark it's not like you know you've got <laughs> the, the, the red <laughs> yeah it's not exactly right it's, <laughs> it's not you know it's not that crimson letter that says you're a horrible person it's not at all any of that that has no relevance it's more like the actual mistakes that you make shouldn't be considered mistakes 
And you've heard this before, but it's actually relevant because sometimes when you deal with social cultural ideas about what is right and wrong, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, when it comes to your artistic vision or something you believe in in yourself and how you want to really represent yourself through your expression, there are no mistakes because they're just opportunities for learning and you have to keep a little bit more kindness for yourself in mind and you have to know hey I'm gonna learn new things and I'm gonna you know really stumble you know and, yeah. and you know another small little piece of, of actually making that fatal mistake I feel that age sometimes is part of that stigma of making a huge mistake sometimes people are afraid that when they're older in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, it doesn't matter, 60s. Making a mistake feels bigger because it almost feels like you maybe should know better. Maybe there's something in your psychology that that's is, making it feel that way. Yes, that's true. That is a stigma. You know? But you're learning as well, just as much as everybody else at yeah. any age. Right? E- even younger. And yeah. I agree with that. It's like that 80 year old, you told me a story was with this 80 year old man who wanted to learn how to read he yes, never he, did he was in his 90s, 90s yes right? and he learned to read and it was so amazing and he, he sat in a class of very young children maybe like yeah, first had to be graders like first kindergarten, kindergarten. he was, had to go through the whole thing he went through all these different classes and his first book was charlotte's web and i remember that that video and it was just so incredible that this man struggled with with that never never got the chance but now he he took that chance and he did it. he did it he accomplished it and imagine the bravery oh, the, the, uh, yeah. imagine like being a, you're like okay man you know I, I'm, an, I'm an older man and i'm sitting around with these little kids and it's like you know no handball in my future unless i you know slip a disc or pop a hip or something no, i'm True. kidding but seriously but- it's like the bravery and actually looking at yourself and saying hey this is something I want to do, and and doing it. It's literally so amazing that you can have, find that much strength in yourself to do it. That's and that in itself is what is the accomplishment. Yeah, you know, reading is tertiary, secondary. That guy, that person, he was like, okay, I got, I want to learn this. This is something I wanted to do. He, yeah, and he stood up for himself mm-hmm. and exactly. did something he wanted to do for himself. That was yeah. really really brave yeah it's perfect perfect tie-in to next you know oh, sub- next t- topic, subtopic which is is it a waste of your time yeah right are you really wasting your time following your dream doing your vision or you know wanting to create something your comic your story visual storytelling anything is it really a waste of your time i know i don't think it is <laughs> no, it isn't actually it, you can't think of it but sometimes it feels that way it does it does in the way that you wonder, you wonder if, if it is a waste of time because is it a waste of time if it's not successful? That's or, the whole, yeah, yeah, it's being accepted by others. Yeah, it's, you know? it's, it's never a failure. But it's not because you're doing something you've always wanted to do. Yeah, exactly. And you can't be a failure if you're actually doing that. Yeah. You know, you may you might have another job. You might have two jobs. But there's a part of you that really wants and needs this. And it's almost like, hey, take the 15 minutes, take the 10 minutes, sit in your car while you're waiting for whatever. It's hard to make that time, but that itch is going to really get to you sometimes. And, and, and don't give up on any of that. You have to really put yourself in a way where it's going to, you're going to feel comfortable working on your vision, working on your, your art. You yeah. Know? It's important. Don't give up on that. So you you will never be a failure if you don't give up on yourself. You know? I agree oh, with that. It's such a cliche and it's so hokey, but when you've remade yourself as many times as we have, yeah. and we've created new identities for ourselves in so many real ways, believe us, we know what we're talking about when you deal with personal shame, being able to create a new you. And dealing with those you know failure demons and who you were and what you are now you can't look at yourself if you're going through it if you're making yourself you know believe in yourself 
that's really a huge deal. And that's literally what's going to put that fear at bay. So. I agree. Just doing it. Yeah. And which is funny because the next one was, was the next topic of it was being a failure, which was another fear. Yeah. But you're right with that. It's, you're, you're never a failure just doing what you want to do, following your dream. That automatically by taking that action Mm -hmm. amidst, you know, you're, you'll never be that. You'll never be a failure. And it's like chasing perfection, you know? Like, what is that about? If you're a failure, right, by not doing it or you think you will be a failure, what is that perfection? Being good enough Mm -hmm. is that, is that, I think this is the worst one, or I I feel like, for me, this is one of the worst things, is, is feeling like you're never good enough, like you're always waiting to be the best artist, to be the best storyteller. And you just, you end up never doing anything. Are you wor- worthy of the art gods? Yeah, you have their you, praise. Yeah. Or, you know, endowing you with something. And yeah. It, <laughs> Great. Yeah. No. Just waiting till you just draw this perfect comic page or this perfect illustration. It's just, it doesn't work like that. I've just learned that that perfection I was chasing was a lie. And that was just one of the most mind blowing, almost even sad things that I've ever really come to grips with and I and I deal with it every day of not being good enough and it's just feeling like you're not good enough yeah feeling you're like you're not good enough like you could be you can be the best artist but still never feel like you're good enough and and there's never even a a good enough no there you're it's just you're just growing you're just doing Mm -hmm. and if the best no. manga, or if your most favorite <laughs> manga kai or anyone, any comic illustrator or creator, storyteller, whatever that may be, if they actually felt that they needed to be more than what they are to do what they wanted to do, they would never do it. Yeah, the, the thing of never even it, chasing that perfection, you is is the worst thing ever because you end up not doing anything, and not doing anything is the worst thing you could ever do. Mm-hmm. So just. Just by starting, mm-hmm. starting now, starting at, at any point in time of, of your skill set, because you'll grow mm-hmm. as you as you just work on it, yeah. and that's what it's about. It mm-hmm. it's not it's about that growth and that doing and that journey of it, which th- that sounds so hokey to me because I've heard that so much, but you don't realize it until you start actually following that doing that action mm-hmm. of it. And then you actually see that, well, that actually, there's truth to that. Yeah, then you, you know, see the truth like, in it. wow, that is hokey, but wow, it's actually truthful. There's That's reality in many ways, you know? You may start off your comic page and your characters, and they might be, in a way, rudimentary, but they're only rudimentary because of when you actually do them more, hundreds of times, thousands of times, that character's gonna change. The environment's gonna change. You're you're changing. Yeah. And they're gonna change with you. So it's basically just growth. Yeah. You know, you're gonna grow, they're gonna grow with you. Just let that growth happen. But you need to be, you know, doing it. So yeah. I agree. And even the even the um, if you look at like your favorite comic books, the yeah. the first series or the first book you have is is not gonna be as good as usually the the end book is like yeah. number one or number ten. It's yeah, right. Number ten. Yeah, we're thinking of Helsing for us, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, right. yeah. he's yeah. grown and he. Oh yeah. Did think about that? Amazing stuff, and I just page a day. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Totally. And just, sometimes yeah. you'll get two books two. done, and yeah. sometimes you'll barely get one in three years. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's it's. But don't. It's a struggle, but you have to just keep doing it yeah. because you owe it to yourself. Yes. And you will never feel, you know good at all you need to just be able to put yourself out there oh and that's the next topic (laughs) that's legit wow putting yourself putting yourself out there yeah you know um the biggest part of putting yourself out there is that spiral of likes and more likes you know you've seen tons of youtube videos or even be on on you know twitter tiktok instagram social media media of that you know way with our artists There's a big deal with actually following the like train, following that. Like, where does your art go? You know, it's like that's a fascinating aspect because you're dealing with success, but it's only the success others give you. 
And yes, there is a real sense that others will, of course, give you success because they literally will see you. But only doing artwork for the likes, that's really betraying yourself as an artist, as a creator. And you set into that world, putting yourself out there in those social medias, that, that world of likes. You put yourself out there initially because, <clears throat> excuse me, because you felt, I want to share my work. Yeah. It was yours before it was seen by someone else. Yes. And you need to remember that because it's that whole, you know, you want to actually keep in mind what is you, you know? how you want to represent your art because how other people see your art might not really be the art you want to share and express. Yeah, and sometimes it could be like a people-pleasing kind of feeling. That's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, you know. And and it's the next, this rolls into our next subtopic, which is your original artistic expression. It's like, what was that? What is that now? How has it changed? Yeah, and that you rek- yeah. rekindling yeah. it, remembering it, knowing mm-hmm. where you start. It's like us being artists, and we're doing YouTube. Are we YouTuberists? <laughs> are we YouTubers or are, are we, we artists? artists? <laughs> no, really. Are we do? Are we YouTube professionals? Are we videographers? You gotta. There's. You know, it's that whole thing. You gotta wear a lot of hats. But it's like, what are you? What is your foundation? What are you? You know, it's really interesting to deal with. Yeah. So the amount of hats to wear mm-hmm. to. To even what it takes to yeah. be an artist now, in a yeah. way, it changes. Yeah. There's a lot of you know mentality, you know mindsets that you really have to really put yourself into. You know, there's yeah. a lot. Of, there's a lot of pretending you have to be, you know, in order to make this work for yourself. You know, the biggest one, the the, the next topic is really a big one for me. You know, Oof. I really think about this a lot. You know, psychologically, and and the topic is expectations. The expectations you have for yourself. Oh, yes. That all leads to success in your mind. Like if you expect a specific type of success, that all goes into that spirals of likes, you know, that spiral of likes world. It's a really interesting thing. And expectations are something that can be very destructive. Yeah. You know. Sometimes just even feeling that you have very high expectations of yourself. Maybe you just... You have so many goals you want to achieve, and it could be that that in itself can be just draining of those expectations. Yeah, it can, and it takes away from your actual like creative process, yeah. which is you know catchphrase. But that you know you literally are creating something, and you have these expectations of yourself. There's no better piece of artwork. You got to admit this if you're an artist. There's no better piece of artwork that you've created that you had no expectations about. Yeah, that's you true. You just sort of I'm just gonna sit down and watch this movie and pop out this little sketch I'm a sketchbook and you're like oh my gosh where would that come from it's because you had no expectations yeah you didn't look upon it like it's the next masterpiece you know what I mean it, it, and that's where you know a lot of this comes from just be yourself you're an artist to create if you let yourself do that it's such a zen experience and that's the antithesis of expectations it is it's the most you know? freeing yeah. thing yeah you have to do to have no expectations right? And this, this is the ending comment on putting yourself out there. It's like this. Don't forget your name. Right? Yes. Yeah. It's like, it's like, who are you? Who are you? You have to always remember that because you can get lost. Yeah, we. it's kind of like legit. akin to spirited away. Yeah, that's exactly Pretty what it much is. Of, yeah, that's of, exactly it. Or just any, like those fairy tales where mm-hmm. you do get spirited away by anything or fairies or whatever and... <laughs> Yeah, right. Forgetting who you are. Off with the fairies. Yeah. <laughs> totally, right? Well, that's the truth. It's important not to mm-hmm. forget who you are and what you stand for for yourself in that way. Your vision. Yeah, your vision. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is our final topic, you know, and in, in this compendium. <laughs> um, it's kind of a big deal, but we'll get into it. It's the path, the way, or... <laughs> What I like to say or what we like to think about is it's truly, you know, the commitment to yourself and your vision. That's really what this is about. However you want to put it, whatever metaphor you want to hang on it, it's a commitment to yourself and what you want to do for yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. First thing in order to actually, like, really commit to that way is consistency. Yes. 
it's one of the hardest things to really be consistent with. <laughs> that, <clears throat> comically right? and perfectly put, consistency is one of the hardest and and but also one of the best things you could ever do. It's the biggest. It's a keystone. It, it is. It's it is the keystone. No, so no matter what you're doing, you know, you're doing a comic, you're doing writing, at whatever you decide yeah. you're doing, that is your dream. If you're the cons- the whole part of it is consistency. If you're not consistent, you won't really see that dream come to reality yeah. if you're not consistent with it. Growth is unavailable to you in your future if you're yeah. not truly consistent. Like you may start to a point, you'll grow to a point, and you may sort of you know subside. It may actually like recede a little bit, yeah. and then you'll start up again and you keep build up again. That consistency, and that's even okay, if it's yeah. little, exactly right. Even if it's a little bit consistency, I'm going to put a half hour here today. Yeah. Put a little bit there. That consistency is what actually matters. And it'll keep you moving forward. It'll keep you down that w- in that way, you know, down that path. Just commit to yourself. It's wonderful. So. Agreed. <clears throat> another major point that we want to bring up in this is starting at a manageable amount. It's very important to have that because... That whole thing biting off more than you can chew, Ugh. you know, it's you know, it's too, it's such a big burden. No, these are real things you have to really come to grips with. And sometimes people will look at the dream, and it has so many tributaries that you need to conform to, and these things begin begin to get very heavy. So you have to remember to just start at a manageable amount. You know, it's that whole thing where you know. You don't want too much, and you don't want too little. Yeah. So, and that's the whole premise. I so. agree with that. But it's it's easy to be become overwhelmed with mm-hmm. goals that you have. Yeah, overthink. Uh, over oh, overthinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ugh. Overthinking, trying to organize your time to such a point that it's mm-hmm. it's literally like wow, this is too much, you know. And that's where the consistency will waver. And that's what it really comes down to is if you're consistent, you're actually managing the amount of work you can do. Yeah. And it's a healthy way. It's not too much. So, yeah. And if you do this, you know, your personal and artistic growth will come in time. That's that whole, that is what consistency and that's what we're talking about. Yeah. The more you do, the better you, you get at it. Yeah. So that's where it all will just happen. Everything is going to fall into place eventually, you know. Um, a lot of people that we've talked to and have known in our past is that a lot of the times it's like writers, people, that, you know, that we've known it's, it's, you know, writers write every day, but they might not write about that linear story that they've created or that they're publishing. They'll write little snippets, but they're writing every day. They're drawing every day. And all of those little pieces will actually come together in the end, but they don't know what for. No one does. You don't really know what for. Like our stories... We come up with little bubble ideas. We write them down, and they're on our little note cards, and we're going to use these concepts, these ideas, and they'll all piece together, which is kind of like, well, that's the exact next topic, literally. It's know your story. You know, that's a big deal. Know your vision. Know what you want to do. If you're actually creating a, you know, creating your, your comic, you need to know your story. Yeah. And you don't have to know every word ever said. You just have to know enough to weave it all together and that's something people don't think about like you you see people who sit there and you got to write a script and then you got to do your storyboards and then you got to do you know everything in, a, in the right way in a ex- specific you know order so. yeah that was something that was um really just hammered into me where it was it was just like you always have to ha- have a beginning middle and ending and it had to be you know one, two, three, and it's just... It has to be in that order. Yeah, in, in, in that order, and that, that isn't the case. Mm-hmm. That is such a terrible thing to 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 be taught. It yeah. was, it never worked for me, and that was never really something that worked. <laughs> yeah, well, because it didn't work. It shouldn't work. It, it, yeah. It you just, know, it's not that fantasy of you pull that piece of paper yeah. out and you put it into that, you know, typewriter, and yeah. you're like, okay, I'm going to write, oh, you know... Uh, scene one, verse one. It's like no, it, it doesn't, doesn't work ever like work that. like that. <laughs> ever. You have an outline. Even the outline could be vague. It could be a whisper, a dream. It could be something like that. Even even all the other writers and other artists, they just mm-hmm. they're always doing stories and comics and ideas, and it's and they're doing it as 
as they're working on it. Like the, yes. the project is going and it's not done. I mean, even no. even big anime, oh, they, yeah. they're always they're you know they they'll do like the first few comics or manga are out and they'll make an anime if it's popular enough and that anime sometimes th- there's so much filler to put in to get to work get it's relevant work. in the story it's, yeah it's relevant it's being to, written by manga yeah so it's like they're they're catching up because they're just doing it as they're going yeah. too so the the artists themselves and they're they're just making the story up as they're going as well but they know where it's going to go but mm-hmm. it's not they're so filler quite literally it's not you know? so linear that they're they can't you know yeah. And, and you can't, and that's a good point because even if your story is what you expect it to be, and you have that beginning, middle, and end, you have it's kind of like, you know, you have the general idea of the story. Yeah. Things are going to change. It's going to grow. So you're going to, you know, you're going to put words down on a page. You're going to put, you know, your your thumbnails down. You're going to start inking, and you're going to put it all out on the page, completely lay out, laid out the way you want it to be, and you're going to step back, and you're going to be like. That's not as that's not exactly how I perceived it. It was better in my head yeah. than it is on the paper or on the screen. It's like that's normal. You have to know that these stories do change. They do actually evolve. They become one of their own things. They're life in itself. It's it's got its own energy and it's going to go in a direction that it's naturally yeah. going to go. And it's okay to change it as you go. You don't it's it's not yeah. not cre- creating is really an exact linear Thing. Yeah, it always is bouncing all over the place, you know. So just be aware that that's normal, it's natural, you know. But you do kind of have to know just enough to piece it together, and that's where that those gaps are. That's where that's what we're talking about. Those gaps in your story, they will come. Yeah. And even if it seems well, that's a little cliche, sometimes just put it in, because sometimes you know it works, and that's okay. You know, you want to get your story. You want to, you want to put your vision out there. You know, because yeah. that's the whole point. A finished work is yeah. better than mm-hmm. a work that's not exactly. done or you don't yeah. even start. Yeah, and that's too. Exactly. It. So, the moral of this story, or the you know, knowing <laughs> is half the battle moment here, is basically this: start at the Goldilocks zone, right? Not too much, not too little. Don't ever, don't overthink everything. Mm-hmm. That I would say. And just do a little. Yeah. It'll end up being a lot. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Okay. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy. And hope you have a great day and a great week. You know? Hope to see you soon. Okay? So, yeah. Like and subscribe, right? <laughs> You're making yes. dreams happen here, people. You're making <laughs> dreams happen. To everybody, please. It's awesome. Yeah. And Thank you so much. We hope we're helping you out if you'd if you like. Watch more. More. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Must charm me out. out. Very long winded, but. But we did it! We did it! <laughs>